Welcome to Never Been Stronger, where I'm going to positively motivate, inspire, and educate people who desire the three categories of exercise, motivation, nutrition, and life in general. Many people throughout my life have motivated and inspired me. They also have educated me to where I am today. I want to give that back to you. So that is what Never Been Stronger is for. Hey everybody, how we doing? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Hey, this episode is just me right now. I got Kurt Eaker and Chris Turpin on my next episode, which to me, they're like Bash Brothers. They're awesome. They're funny. They are very strong and they're just overall great guys. So I look forward to having them on here in the next day or so. But this Never Been Stronger episode, I'm going to talk to you about the last three episodes, WT Franklin, Danny Walker and Doug Pinner. So starting with W.T. Franklin, the uh, fantastic uh, segment by him. He he has a great history of powerlifting, and I've since I've gotten since I've been able to know him over the last oh three months or so more. Um, I've started to realize how big of a family man he is, how hard he works, not just in the sport of powerlifting, but obviously in his career and outside of the gym. So I've learned a lot from WT in more than just powerlifting. Uh, I actually met WT over at Anytime Fitness. Um, he stopped in one day, checked us out. This was probably two years ago. And somehow, I mean, our paths have crossed in various places. I mean, he knows some people from back from Monmouth, Illinois. So it's pretty cool how being here in Peoria, I'm able to still meet new people that I have associated, through people I have associated with in the past, like such as Jean Ann Berglund from Monmouth. Uh, ever since I was in high school, her and I would be at the Warren County YMCA at 4.30, 5 a.m. in the morning, and she'd be leaving as I'm getting in. So heck, she was there at 4 a.m. in the morning doing her exercise. And um, it's just awesome how people can know each other for an extended period of time and then finally like as time progresses just great things start to happen because I mean she's done some great things in powerlifting and so is Team Franklin overall and I'm excited to see what this next meet um, has in store for all of us. Um, staying on Team Franklin, Danny Walker, he was also on Never Been Stronger. He was on the second podcast here and we did that at the Gorilla Pit as well. Uh, we talked a lot about his history. Um, quite frankly, I really didn't know too much about Danny. I didn't know he went to Eureka College. Um, and just knowing that he wanted to be a police officer as well was pretty cool. So I learned a lot about him and found I found that him and I have a lot of the same motivation. Um, I asked him who his motivators were. He said that uh, it was one was his wife. Uh, W.T. Franklin was two for in the powerlifting side of things and I'm sure other things as well and then uh, oh it was his uncle yeah his uncle was his other one but when he said his wife it really related to me of how my fiance Caitlin is one of my huge motivators in my life so that's something that I'll talk about more here in a little bit but it was really cool to relate to Danny and be able to just talk to him for 25 minutes just about anything and everything from growing up to life to powerlifting so that's cool and then last podcast I had the owner of Anytime Fitness Peoria my mean old boss Doug Pinner no he ain't mean but the uh had him on I knew more of his story of where he came from what motivated him to get to a healthier place and what what really inspired him to open up an Anytime Fitness which if you go back to his podcast it really wasn't his idea it was more of his wife, Lindsay's. So um, go back, listen to those three podcasts, and take take something from each of them. Whether it's exercise, maybe it's life, maybe it's I mean, maybe you listen to it, hear a joke from them, and you take that and share it with somebody else. I mean, just go back and listen to those three because those are those are three huge influencers in my life, and not just mine. I mean, probably tens of twenties to hundreds of people in this area so go ahead go back and listen but today I'm gonna talk a little bit about 
my history of fitness, my motivation, and most importantly, my failures. Which, my failures, um, I think are, they're not like huge or anything by, by any means, but it really has taught me, my failures have taught me so much, so that way I'm able to keep progressing in my career. But first, let's talk about history. So, back when I was, let's say, I think I was 14 years old, I started playing football, started playing basketball, I was always playing baseball, but football and basketball I really had to get better at because those are probably the two that I was weaker at. I was always better at baseball growing up, but for football I needed to get bigger and stronger. So, I don't know what my motive was or whatever it was. I think I just remember playing out in the yard when I was a kid and seeing an old rusty barbell behind my neighbor's garage. And I remember that when I was 14 or 15. I think I was 14 when I remember this. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's an old rusty barbell behind my behind the, the Anderson's garage. I'm going to go take that. And uh, so I went and took that, took that to our garage, and I... Just started using it in the garage. I mean, we had a two-star, two-stall garage back home in Roseville, Illinois, with a little office in back, which my dad used to use that for his real estate business. But not, but then at that time they had a different location, so that was open for me. And <laughs> the I just started doing curls, overhead presses, bicep curls. I mean, anything and everything that I could learn, um, whether it was looking online. Or I found a bodybuilding book in that gra- in our garage as well. I assume that was my brother's, maybe my dad's. I have no idea, but I found a bodybuilding book in my garage, and it had, I mean, it had all of the greats. I mean, more specifically, who I remember was Arnold. I I I mean, he was in that, and I would just look at exercises. More specifically, upper body, chest, biceps, shoulders, triceps, back, and just did it. I mean, I still have this barbell hanging up in my garage above my American flag that's hanging up as well. And, I mean, looking at it right now, it's bent, it's wore, it's out of shape. And that kind of brings me to do a, to a point to where, like, even, no matter how old or rusty that barbell gets, it's going to mean a whole whole lot to myself. So... I, I think a lot of the weightlifters and powerlifters and guys who are just really born into the iron can appreciate that. So, with my history as well, getting getting stronger, getting faster, getting bigger, I guess, um, for sports, my freshman, sophomore year, I just started really seeing a lot of results with exercise, weightlifting more specifically, and it was something that just kind of came natural to me. I, I started to enjoy it, and I started to see a lot of growth. And so I started looking up online, bodybuilding.com, um, various blogs such as Tony Gentlecore and John Romanello. Uh, those are two guys I've followed ever since I was 14, 15 years old. And, I mean, watching those two grow have been freaking amazing because going from, like, John with, like, 2,000 Facebook likes on his page, now he probably has well over 50,000. Heck, you might even have 100,000. Um, I'm going to actually check right now to look for you because because I remember when he, uh, when I first found him, he only had probably 2,000 or so um, Facebook likes. Let's see here. Typing with one finger at a time right now. But, all right, here we go. You know, he doesn't have a Facebook page anymore. He must have too many people, but whatever. Um, but, yeah, bodybuilding.com, John Romano, Tony Genocore. Um, I just started following guys, and the guys that I started to follow was mainly because of an influencer that I had growing up, Jesse Hawkins. Um, when I was junior, senior in high school, I had to write a paper about something that I wanted to do as a career, and it was personal training and 
I, ever since I had great success growing up from weightlifting and just doing sports and being active, I reached out to Jesse and told him, I was like, hey, I think I want to be a personal trainer after high school. What can you do to help me? And he like gave me all the tools necessary to do so. And he was so open to answering any questions I had about it. And it was, he, he really helped me get to where I am today. And uh, he taught me or showed me these people, John Romanello, uh, Tony General Core, and then various other coaches out there that um, I followed as well. Just more specifically, I remember is uh, Roman and General Core. So from high school to college, I went to college because I was going to be a business administration major. I was like, screw that noise. I cannot do accounting. I just don't like business. It's not really what my cup of tea was. So I was like, I'm just going to do exercise science once Monmouth College developed that back in my right before my junior year. So kid growing up, wrap it up real quick. Kid growing up, I found the barbell, found the weight room, found the sports, 14. I was a young age. I just kept doing it and doing it, and I saw great success. I mean, I cleaned 250 pounds as a senior in high school, which is pretty dang good if you are 17 or 18 years old. Then went to college, was going to be a business major and a phys ed major, double major. Didn't like the business because it was just boring, but then mom's college got exercise science, and I went to that. Then from there, that's when I feel like my knowledge of exercise and nutrition and just fitness overall really took off. Um, I was already studying to be a certified personal trainer when I was 19, and I passed that my sophomore year of college, but then going into my junior year of college for exercise science, I was already a step, step ahead of most of the people in my classes because I studied the personal training certification and, ha and got my uh, certificate in that, and doing so, I was able to, I mean, raise my hand in class, answer all these questions, and people were like, how the hell does he know all this? And I, and I was like, I already got my certification. So I knew at a young age that I wanted to do this, and that's why I'm still doing it today. And mostly because I love it. I love seeing the results that you can do to your body. I love seeing, I love hearing what people can do through exercise. I mean, just last week, two weeks ago, I think I've talked about it on here before, a lady was able to, um, she was able to decrease the time of doing the dishes from 60 minutes to 45 minutes without any back pain. Before, she was doing dishes for 60 minutes with uh, back pain. So, and she was only, and she's only been exercising for two weeks. So it's crazy what exercise can do and how the life benefits um, are so rewarding. And when I hear stuff like that, it's just like, man, like they have to, some people out there work so hard to get to where they want to be just so they can feel better. Not, it's not so they can lift, x amount of weight it's not so they can look like this it's so they can feel better and just i mean change into something that they are comfortable with so i mean that's kind of my brief background my history of where i've come from um in terms of my motivation it is definitely one my uh, fiance caitlin and my dog i mean you think crazy that dogs would be to be a motivator, but but they both are. Um, my dog's name is Pumpkin, by the way. Yeah, laugh all you want, but those two. You got my parents, my mom, Annette, my dad, Ed. They both own their have started their own business, and they uh, they started their own business and just grew from scratch. I mean. My dad, he owns six or seven real estate offices here in Illinois, West Central Illinois. And I mean, if I can follow in their footsteps, I think I'd be, say that my life is a success. Then you have uh, Blaine Robinson. He is a friend of mine who actually, growing up in high school, he uh, was a huge motivator to not only myself, but a lot of kid, a lot of athletes that were in the weight room because he was someone who was smaller so he had to work to get bigger and stronger in order to get to where he wanted to be. Um, his junior year, he didn't even really play too much for the varsity football team. But after that season, he was like, screw this. I'm definitely going to get to where I want to be. 
and his senior year he made all state linebacker um maybe even all state uh offensive lineman and he i mean just a beast huge motivator to all of us and unfortunately probably i think it was three years later after he graduated high school he was in he is a military veteran and once when he was back on one of his bases i think it was over in kansas city he was injured in a motorcycle car accident he was the one driving the motorcycle lady pulled out hit him don't really know exactly how it all happened but traumatic brain injury and now he is uh, wheelchair bound but he's getting back his strength he's getting back his awareness his motivation and I see it every time I see him and it's something that if you're around him a lot you're gonna be like is is it getting better is it getting better even maybe himself but I know he is and I know he's if he's he might be listening to this so Blano keep going at it buddy keep pressing those 100 pound dumbbells my man so my motivator so far Fiance Caitlin, my dog Pumpkin, my mom, mom and dad, Blaine Robinson, and then uh, Nolan Kane. When I was growing up, I was I don't know how old I was, like twelve, but he I was twelve. He was probably eleven. Actually, I was in seventh grade. So if that says anything, uh, my best friend was diagnosed with leukemia. He was in sixth grade, and he was down at St. Jude for about two years. Then he was able to come home a couple times. And then his eighth grade year, my freshman going into high school, he passed away. Um, and I have NK5 on my chest, and the Cardinal represents him. So Nolan Kane, his favorite number is five, and then the Cardinal represents him. And I remember just staying up super late, early in the mornings. I mean, whether it's one in the morning, three in the morning, whatever it may be. Um, MSN Messenger, I know all you guys out there remember that, so we would stay up, just, I mean, it's a, it was support at a young age that we really didn't know about, that, which is kind of cool that I say that now, because I never really thought of it that way. Um, he, we were supporting each other and motivating each other and uh, creating a healthy life for our minds, but we didn't know that at the time, we were just... 12, 13 years old. So looking back at that now, it's kind of actually really cool to see how that was. And unfortunately, he's not here with us today anymore, but a huge motivator to myself and so many other of us back from the Mammoth Brosville area in West Central Illinois as a whole and as well. Um, who else we got out there? I mean, overall, my family is a huge motivator. So and if I can follow in the footsteps of a lot of my family members that have created successful business, then I'm going to do so. And that way I can do what they have done, created something, and then just kept growing and growing and growing to help raise a family for the most part. Um, and then I have failures as well. So what kind of failures do I have out there that I have grown from? And maybe you can relate to some of the failures that you may have had, because we all have failures. Um, let's say, let's start with younger. Growing up, let's say, when I first got my personal training certification, I thought I was going to really like start a business and start training people out of my parents' shop and have my gym and all that stuff. And I mean, I guess that's a young kid with big dreams, having a vision, um, as I still currently do, I mean, 24 years old, I guess now, but I still have a vision. I still have dreams. We all do. We all should. But uh, when I was 19, I, I mean, I even had business cards. I trained one person. He actually is a police officer up in, I'm going to say Moline now. It might be Rock Island. I can't recall exactly what uh, Quad City uh, city that is, but one of the two. And he came to me. He wanted to increase his bench press because that was what he was having the biggest problem with. He was probably about 150 pounds roughly, and he needed to bench 98% of his body weight. Coming into it, he was only able to do about 95 pounds. So all of my craziness that I had in my head and that I've experienced from working out and training was I kind of used what I had done for him, but I also even took it up another notch. Like 
I was always experimenting new things with him. I mean, I look over, I'm in my garage right now. And if you ever see my garage, I have a Smith machine. It's a big old piece of equipment, but it's a Smith, the Smith machine can have some stoppers at the bottom. So if you're on the bottom of a bench press, I could set it up to where he was pressing from the bottom up. And I did that with him and it seemed to really, really work for his bench press. I mean, I would load like 180 pounds up on there and I would just have him press against it. And I mean, eventually he started pushing it up and up and up. And so that helped his regular bench press when he went down and he'd get through that sticking point. Uh, he was able to do that and pass his test. And I mean, I rem I still have the thank you card he sent me and it's actually inside in the drawer in our living room. And he, s he sent that to me when I was, oh, I don't remember what, when it was, but he sent it to me and it was super humbling. I mean, because I was able to help someone get stronger, that's seriously all I did was help him get stronger so he can pass a fitness test so that way he could become a police officer so that way he could raise a family. And I mean, I just saw a picture on Facebook the other day of one, his little girl and I mean, it's super cool to see that. I mean, that's really what it is, what I do in my health and fitness is I want to um, change people for the good. I want them to experience a great experience and then grow into something that they can look back and be like, man, that was awesome when I really started doing that. But now I've came into this position in my life and I'm happy for that. So that's really some things that um, are very humbling for myself. Um, but back to my PT business, I had business cards and I PT X PT personal training by Patrick Thompson. I had business cards that I made up on Vista print my sophomore year of college. Yes. Cause I was in one bigger hall, made those up, made a Facebook page. Um, I don't, I just didn't know how to really throw myself out there, sell myself. I couldn't even freaking make a Facebook status without having more than two grammatical errors anyways. So I could see why people didn't really want to train with me. But I mean, I guess for that, if you're trying to start something, um, whether it's a business, fitness, um, a job, whatever, I mean, just go into it not scared. I think the first time that I did all this, I was scared and I didn't know what to do. Like if I was with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, I could tell them what muscle was what, what the, each joint was doing, um, what, I mean, I could tell them whatever that was about the fitness side of things. But in terms of the business, the communications, I was terrible at that. And that was a failure that I had growing up when I was 19 and 20 years old that I am truly grateful for. Um, so when I was 19, I kind of stopped with trying to do my own personal training business and went into my junior year, senior year of college and just, I lived the college life. I mean, I drank all the time. I went out with friends. I, I didn't skip too many classes. Um, I just, I was a college kid. I'll put it that way. And I had fun, but one thing I do regret and that I think that I kind of had a little failure was on was my junior and senior year. I really didn't, I really didn't take advantage of what I was learning and my opportunities that I had because I look back at those two years, all the time that I had available to create a bomb ass fitness blog, a website, Facebook page, that was two years wasted that I could have gotten ahead of the game even more. So that that's a couple of the failures that I had growing up and I didn't really realize that until probably a year after college. Um, I started working at Anytime Fitness and that's where the change comes into this podcast is that if you wanna do something, you gotta be able to, to make a change. I didn't make a change physically or mentally, I made a change in location. Living in Roseville and Monmouth, I moved from there to Peoria, lived with my fiance's parents and her for a year until we had our, bought our own home. And that was a change that, I, I mean, I was comfortable with it, but it was different because 
I've never really done that. I was moving away from home right at, like, literally, right when I was done with college, graduation day, packed up all my stuff, moved out, moved from Monmouth, moved to Roseville, started living. I started working, well, I was already working anytime fitness during school of, from March through graduation. But then I, the next Monday after graduation, back to work, back to personal training people. I can remember one of the names that I was working with. And it's like, if you're not willing to change, whether it's a physical location, your body, your mindset, you're not gonna be able to experience some things that um, you're envisioning or desiring because, and then, then ultimately you're not gonna grow. So that's one change that I really, that was a huge impact for me. Um, I believe if I was still back home, unfortunately I wouldn't be to where I am today. And that's just, it's location, 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 location. A business person will say that's almost everything in terms of successful business. Then another change that I had coming up, um, actually a failure, but then I learned that I needed to make a change for this was in the powerlifting world, if you want to be a successful powerlifter or successful anything in the sport, you have to have a team. I was doing the powerlifting stuff by myself. Really, I really didn't ask anyone else to um, do it with me. And finally, um, WT Franklin opened up the Gorilla Pit over on Pioneer Parkway, which is literally like two miles from Anytime Fitness Peoria. So it couldn't get any better for me. I, I'm a iron guy. I'm a I'm a uh, gritty weightlifter, powerlifter, whatever you want to call it. Like, I mean, the type, that's my type of gym is the dirt, the grime, this, the loud music. And that's because that's what I was growing up with. And that's how my, all my coaches were when I was growing up. And it, that's, I think, where, I, where it helped get me to where I am today. But he opened that up and I went over there, heard about it because he was emailing me through my newsletters I was sending out and was like saying, good job and stuff so we kept in touch a little bit and I was like Shh. I was like right then and there he was like so do you want to join and I'm like oh shit <laughs> uh, and I couldn't say no I couldn't say oh think about it I was like yeah I'm gonna yeah let's do this so that was a change that I might not have been comfortable with yet because yeah I was strong whatever doing stuff by myself but I was a small, small fish going into a large pond with some big sharks, and it, I had to, and I still am, had to open my mind for that change, that experience, in order for me to grow as a better person, as a better coach, as a better power lifter. If I didn't accept everything there, I wouldn't get any better. I, could, I would just still go and be going through the motions. The, the training programming that I've been doing over the last 12 weeks is unreal compared to what I was doing. What I was doing was not right, it wasn't wrong, but there's ways to make things more efficient for what you're trying to do. I'm trying to get stronger for one rep. And the things that I've been, been doing that they've had me change is working. So I'm not gonna give you more details on that. You have to find out for yourself. But. Um, it's a change and experience that is allowing me to grow a lot. Um, so with that, I mean, for failures, I think it's more of, are you willing to put yourself out there or are you gonna be scared or hesitant about it? That's a, where a lot of my failures have came from. I think if you're listening to this, obviously if you're listening to this, you're listening to this. I don't even know why I said that, but there is a lot of reason for fa failure that people can give you or you can give yourself, but ultimately, I think it boils down to fear. Uh, Doug Penner mentioned it in the last episode. Correct, I might have to go back and listen to that again, but fear is the lack of knowing, I believe is what he said. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, to be honest. So that's why I was scared, but I didn't ask the right questions to the, for the, from the right people. So I was scared, but I mean, fear is, I mean, it's natural. We're all gonna have that. But if you want to be, so, if you want to be successful, um, if you want to be so successful that it, it's almost like 
breathing, like you do anything to breathe and you do anything to be successful, you cannot have that fear of failing, failure in your mind. There's a lot of YouTube videos of motivation out there. Um, I can't recall what it was, but something about if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, you'll do that. But failure, I think, is more fear. And that's a lot of things that when I was growing up that I had was fear. So we all can't be perfect. One mistake or multiple setbacks do not mean the road has ended. Have a vision in your mind and don't stop. So PT by PT, never been stronger change experience and growth this is how failures and setbacks are beneficial to my fitness life and business success so far if you want any more go to ptxpt.net soundcloud patrick thompson or ptxpt also go back listen to wt franklin danny walker and doug pinner on itunes P it, actually it's never been stronger then on Facebook, I have a fitness page, PTXPT, Instagram at PTXPT, then on Twitter at PT underscore X underscore PT. With that, everybody, thank you for listening. I appreciate that. If you find this very um, motivating to you or beneficial for somebody else, share it with them. It doesn't have to be publicly. It can be through a personal message. Share it with them. Then... If you have other podcasts that you listen to or success stories, share them with me. I want to hear about that. Um, communication is key in this world, and that's one thing a lot of us lack is communication. The lack of communication creates a lot of um, possible hard feelings for people. So communicate with me. Let me know what you think. Um, podcast success stories, love those. Then... One last thing on Thursday morning, be ready for Kurt Eaker and Chris Turpin. Great friends from high school I know here. They're from East Peoria. Um, one of them had a uh, medical issue a couple years back. One of them was powerlifting. I want them to tell you the story. So stay tuned for that Thursday morning. Chris Eaker, Chris Turpin, hashtag Team Franklin, hashtag Never Been Stronger. My name is Patrick Thompson. I'm out.